Hello. Been a few days. Things are changing. So, what's new, right? I'm sure they're changing for you, too. I'm not the lone stranger here. All right. Um, in just re-listening to the Crossing the Event Horizon DVDs that Nassim Haramain put out some years ago, I ran across a really neat, a couple of really neat pieces of information that correlate and integrate so nicely with um, the way I see things. Or with some of that, I mean, geez, words are so inadequate. Okay, so once upon a time, I did a, a video where I postulated that there is no night the way we perceive it. It's not possible based on um, science as we understand it today. Now, just like each atom is 99.99999% empty and maybe more, maybe there's a few more nines there, I don't know, I round it down to five, it's empty. And so, as a result of that, uh, the calculation is that all of the mass of the typical human body fits in a thimble and fills it about half full. That's how much solid substance is in your body there. It all fits in a thimble. How interesting, huh? Pretty good evidence for a virtual reality here. My hologram. Okay. Um, now, I said there could be no night. And I know that sounds crazy, but so does the fact that your body's solid substance fits in a thimble, and yet it's, you know, this is proven. There's a big difference between proof and evidence. Proof is uh, pretty rigidly structured. Most things are just evidence. Okay, so let's look at the solar system. Uh, the little models that we may have seen in high school or college of the mo moving uh, solar system are not at all to scale. And, you know, to make something like that feasibly, they, they couldn't be. Well, you know, a million Earths would fit in the sun. A million Earths. So the sun is a million times bigger than the earth. So put that to scale, you know, and then do the distances right and everything. And it's just, we've never seen what it really, really is. The sun takes up 99.8% of the mass of the solar system. So all the planets put together, including the big boys, you know, Jupiter and Saturn, uh, is only 0.2% of the mass of the solar system. Earth, Mars, Moon, Venus, all that, Mercury, you know, uh, the head of a pin, just really small. All right, now, um, and I'll put some pictures in this video uh, to show the relative sizes. Um, you know, those things are fun to play with. All right, so we have a little tiny marble of an earth next to one of those great big gym balls that people can get their whole body on top of, you know, I mean the the um, relative size is ridiculous. So just imagine a really, really, really huge sun and uh, then put the earth out there as a little tiny itty bitty thing. 
a grape, you know, um, and the other planets. Now, turn the sun on, have it start emitting light, and have the earth rotating around. You've got to realize that the earth being as small as it is, that the sun shines right around it. The sun shines 24-7. I mean, we get the impression that it, it only shines part-time because of the rotation of the earth, but that's nonsense. I don't care if it's midnight, the sun still shines. That being the case, and earth being so minuscule, if you do the mental experiment, you see that night as we experience it where we look out and the whole sky is quite black and you can see a tremendous range of stars and um, galaxies and star systems out there uh, against the black backdrop that doesn't make sense. The sun is still shining. The sun did not stop shining. And so in my earlier video, I, I didn't propose any solution. I just said it's not possible. With physics and sciences, we understand it with the simple light distances, relative sizes, and the mechanics of it. Uh, if you have something that bright and that big uh, shining, its radiance on something as small and actually as close to the Sun as we are, we're only the third planet out, then uh, you don't have the possibility for the experience of night as we experience it. And I left it at that. Well, um, I can't give you the whole thing, uh, but Nassim uh, Haramain, again I'll put some links in with this um, and if you can do it get his uh, DVD set on crossing the event horizon I think it's on DVD 2 says that uh, not only is the atom a mini black hole but that earth itself is inside of a black hole and that's why we have the experience of night that we do. Well, you know, how can I prove it? Uh, I'm no physicist, but uh, he does a pretty good job of establishing his black hole mechanics and he has uh, been ahead of science in a number of things. Uh, the way we understand physics and astrophysics is simply incorrect the way we understand that the, the cosmos, the universe, the galaxy is put together is incorrect in my humble opinion and it must be and remain humble. However, I can give you some good links. Um, one of my favorites is Thunderbolts of the Gods. Now, I will say it calls itself part one and it's free and I'll, I'll put a link to the, to the whole thing out there for you. And I'll see if I can find Haramain's Event Horizon DVDs, if he's allowed those to be up on the web somewhere. And if I can find them, I'll put that link in too. But in Thunderbolts of the Gods, they propose an electromagnetic basis for uh, the cosmos and for cosmology. And it simplifies things tremendously just as Haramain's work does. I mean, if you listen to Crossing the Event Horizon, uh, by the time you're, you're done with it, or, or not even that, um, Nassim establishes that there's no need for the strong force and the weak force, and indeed you can unify um, quantum physics and uh, regular physics, and uh, he does a good job of it. And he's got 
you know, a track record, some published papers. He's got a partner that he works with, Dr. Rausch, I think it is. And uh, their, their science is pretty good. I mean, he gets a good audience wherever he goes. And he's well worth a listen. Uh, his ideas are radical, and they upset the apple cart quite thoroughly. But then, come on, the apple cart wasn't working for us anyway. Uh, there's too many things that aren't explained, and the strong force and the weak force are very weak. Um, he calls it physics as you go. You know, when things don't quite add up, you do the calculations for what's missing, and you slap a strong force on it, or whatever. And uh, it's understandable why science would do that, but surely it must be recognized as only a temporary measure until we come up with what's really there instead of just these vague calculations for something that's never been measured or found you know uh, it's just calculations that fit what's missing as Nassim says uh, with the current calculations it only explains four percent of the mass of the universe well what's wrong with this picture and so I think we can look to thunderbolts of the gods to um, fill in the rest and I think uh, we really have some excitement and I find joy and delight uh, in Nassim and in Thunderbolts of the Gods. Now I haven't yet found anything that I can be on board with a hundred percent so I'm not saying there's there's ultimate truth in these presentations but if we want to continue to climb the spiral of understanding and growth then we have to be willing to not hold on with such a death grip to our current understandings of things we have to get a lot more flexible adopt and develop that flexible perspective that I'm so fond of and uh, all the time in my life things will come up and show me that which I'm still attached to and uh, you know so I'm not claiming any perfection here folks uh, never have and uh, it takes all of us each of us brings a very important puzzle piece to the table and so in listening to one another and in being brave enough to share you know um, if you're if you feel like you have something to say but you don't feel good about putting your your mug on a video well you can make a video with just an image with just a picture and uh, you know like they do with the radio programs I watch the coast-to-coast -coast, uh, programs when somebody records it and puts it up as a video on YouTube and it's just a picture that's there with the audio so you know feel free to do that it's in our joint conversation that we're putting things together. We've discovered we can't trust the media. Uh, we can't trust science and NASA and the rest of it. Um, they do a tremendous amount. They put a tremendous amount of effort into hiding the truth from us. Uh, there's, there's really nothing we can trust. We can't trust government uh, or society in general. And we can't trust uh, the, the whole commercial thing, corporations, because greed runs that. And so there's tremendous manipulation to gain personal advantage that goes on. And so, in a way, it's kind of a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. And yet, there are so many light beings amongst us. And we're getting together. And uh, we find one another on the Internet and we share and so there are many many books out there there's a lot of disinformation as well as information but with our rising in consciousness our intuitive abilities are uh, increased and I wonder you know as our I believe our DNA our junk DNA is being restructured is coming online however that's happening and perhaps for the strands as they're added uh, the additional abilities that we're gaining come with that I don't know it all makes sense I really don't believe in 
miracles as the breaking of any kind of laws. Rather uh, that someone like Jesus or any master is able to work with laws that we don't yet understand, uh, higher physics, higher dimensional physics, multi-dimensional physics. And so it is all coming together for us bit by bit, piece by piece. So I hope each one will do your piece and share what your intuition brings to you. You are not separate. No one is separate. There's no such thing as an individual, just like there's no such thing as uh, an objective observer. It doesn't exist. You know, things as we were taught and we grew up believing them to be, throw it out. Just throw it out. Be willing to start again. Be willing to get really creative with it. And give us your piece. What have you to say? Good day.